is a really good philosophy. And besides the Plato, it's a really good thing to understand what is their authentic self. Number one, be open to your own experiences. The truth is it's imperative to be open to your own experiences. This means embracing the full spectrum of emotions, thoughts, and challenges that life presents to you. Rather than avoiding or suppressing these experiences, allow yourself to fully engage with them. Being open to your own experiences requires a willingness to explore both the positive and negative aspects of your life. It means acknowledging and accepting your achievements, joys, and moments of happiness. It also means facing your fears, disappointments, and setbacks head on. By embracing all aspects of your experiences, you gain a deeper understanding of yourself. You become aware of your strengths and weaknesses, your passions and interests, and the values that guide your actions. This self-awareness is crucial in shaping your authentic self. Being open to your experiences also involves being present in the moment. Instead of dwelling on the past or constantly worrying about the future, focus on the present moment. Pay attention to the details of your surroundings, engage fully in conversations, and immerse yourself in the activities you enjoy. By being present, you cultivate a deeper connection with yourself and the world around you. Being open to your own experiences means being willing to learn and grow from them. Every experience, whether positive or negative, offers an opportunity for growth and self-improvement. Embrace the lessons that life presents to you and use them as stepping stones towards becoming the best version of yourself. It is important to note that being open to your own experiences does not mean becoming a passive observer of your life. It requires active participation and engagement. Take initiative in pursuing new experiences, stepping out of your comfort zone, and challenging yourself. By doing so, you expand your horizons, discover new passions, and unlock hidden potentials within yourself. So, being open to your own experiences is a fundamental aspect of becoming who you really are. Embrace the highs and lows of life. Be present in the moment and actively seek growth and self-improvement. By doing so, you embark on a transformative journey towards authenticity and self-discovery. Remember, it is through embracing your experiences that you truly uncover the essence of who you are meant to be. Number two, be open to the world around you. I would say this, but to me, the Irish are the funniest people in the world. Can you find me for us? In addition to being open to your own experiences, it is equally important from engaging with the broader context in which we exist. Being open to the world means embracing diversity and seeking out different perspectives. Recognize that everyone has their own unique experiences, beliefs, and values. By actively listening to others and respecting their viewpoints, you broaden your own understanding of the world and challenge your preconceived notions. To be open to the world around you, Cultivate a sense of curiosity and a thirst for knowledge. Seek out opportunities to learn about different cultures, traditions, and ideas. Read books, explore art, attend lectures, or engage in meaningful conversations. By expanding your intellectual horizons, you gain a deeper appreciation for the richness and complexity of the world. Being open to the world means being mindful of the interconnectedness of all things. Understand that your actions have an impact on others and the environment. Embrace a sense of responsibility towards creating a positive change in the world. This can be through small acts of kindness, supporting causes that resonate with you, or actively advocating for social and environmental justice. Embracing the world also involves finding inspiration in nature. Take time to appreciate the beauty of the natural world around you. Whether it's a serene landscape, a vibrant sunset, or the sound of birds chirping. Allow yourself to be present and connected to the wonders of nature. This connection can bring a sense of peace, grounding, and perspective to your life. Being open to the world also means being open to new experiences and stepping outside of your comfort zone. Travel to new places, try new activities, and engage with people from different backgrounds. By immersing yourself in unfamiliar situations, you broaden your horizons, challenge your assumptions, and discover new aspects of yourself. So, 
Being open to the world around you is crucial in the journey of becoming who you really are. Embrace diversity, seek knowledge, and cultivate a sense of responsibility towards the greater good. By connecting with others, appreciating nature, and embracing new experiences, you expand your understanding of yourself and the world. Remember, it is through this openness that you find inspiration, growth, and a deeper sense of purpose in life. Number three, understand that you are constantly growing and changing. One of the fundamental teachings of Marcus Aurelius is the understanding that you are constantly growing and changing. To become who you really are, it is crucial to embrace this concept and recognize that personal growth is an ongoing process. Understand that you are not a fixed entity, but rather a dynamic being. Your thoughts, beliefs, and perspectives evolve over time as you gain new experiences and insights. Embrace this fluidity and be open to the transformative power of growth. By acknowledging that you are constantly evolving, you free yourself from the constraints of self-imposed limitations. You give yourself permission to explore new possibilities, challenge old beliefs, and step outside your comfort zone. This mindset allows you to embrace change as an opportunity for self-discovery and personal development. Embracing the idea of constant growth also means being open to learning. Cultivate a thirst for knowledge and actively seek out opportunities for self-improvement. This can involve reading books, attending workshops, taking courses, or seeking mentorship. By continuously expanding your knowledge and skills, you enhance your capacity for growth and unlock new potentials within yourself. Furthermore, understanding that you are constantly growing and changing requires self-reflection. Take time to evaluate your thoughts, actions, and beliefs. Assess whether they align with your authentic self and the person you aspire to become. Be willing to let go of outdated patterns or behaviors that no longer serve you. This self-awareness and introspection propel you forward on your journey of self-discovery. It is important to approach growth with patience and compassion for yourself. Understand that personal development is not a linear path but rather a series of ups and downs. Embrace the challenges and setbacks as opportunities for learning and resilience building. Celebrate your progress, no matter how small, and acknowledge that growth takes time. So understanding that you are constantly growing and changing is a vital aspect of becoming who you really are. Embrace the fluidity of your identity, be open to learning, and engage in self-reflection. By embracing change and nurturing a growth mindset, you unlock your full potential and embark on a transformative journey towards self-discovery. Remember, personal growth is a lifelong process, and by understanding this, you empower yourself to continuously evolve into the best version of yourself. Number four, show your individuality every day. It's not just designed to look good. It's built to command attention. To truly become who you really are, it is essential to show your individuality every day. Embracing and expressing your unique qualities, interests, and passions is a powerful way to honor your authentic self. One of the key teachings of Marcus Aurelius is the importance of staying true to oneself. In a world that often pressures us to conform and fit into societal norms, showing your individuality becomes an act of self-affirmation and empowerment. Start by embracing your unique qualities and strengths. Recognize the aspects of yourself that set you apart from others. Whether it's your creativity, kindness, or sense of humor, celebrate these attributes and allow them to shine through in your daily life. Expressing your individuality can take many forms. It could be through the way you dress, the hobbies you pursue, or the values you uphold. Find ways to incorporate your personal interests and passions into your daily routine. Engage in activities that bring you joy and allow you to express your true self. Be courageous in sharing your opinions and perspectives. Don't be afraid to voice your thoughts, even if they differ from those around you. Your unique viewpoint adds richness to conversations and contributes to a diverse exchange of ideas. Remember that showing your individuality doesn't mean seeking attention or being in conflict with others. It is about being authentic and genuine in your actions and choices. Be confident in who you are and 
embrace the freedom to be yourself without seeking validation or approval from others. At times, you may face challenges or criticism for expressing your individuality. Stay resilient and true to yourself. Surround yourself with people who support and appreciate your uniqueness. Seek out communities or groups that share similar interests, where you can feel a sense of belonging and acceptance. By showing your individuality every day, you inspire others to do the same. Your authenticity becomes a beacon of light, encouraging those around you to embrace their own uniqueness and live authentically. So, showing your individuality every day is a powerful way to become who you really are. Embrace your unique qualities, express your passions, and stay true to yourself. Be confident in your individuality and inspire others to do the same. Remember, the world needs your authentic self, so let it shine brightly each and every day. Number five, find time for short periods of being alone. In addition to embracing your individuality, it is important to find time for short periods of being alone. Taking moments of solitude allows you to reconnect with yourself, recharge your energy, and gain clarity in a fast-paced world. Finding time for solitude provides an opportunity for self-reflection and introspection. It allows you to step away from the noise and distractions of daily life, giving you the space to examine your thoughts, emotions, and desires. Use this time to tune in to your inner voice, listen to your intuition, and gain a deeper understanding of yourself. During these moments of solitude, Engage in activities that bring you peace and tranquility. It could be going for a walk in nature, practicing meditation or mindfulness, journaling, or simply sitting in silence. These activities help quiet the mind and create a sense of inner calm. Being alone also allows you to focus on self-care. Use this time to pamper yourself, whether it's taking a relaxing bath, indulging in a hobby you enjoy, or simply curling up with a good book. Prioritizing self-care helps replenish your energy and enhances your overall well-being. Furthermore, finding time for solitude fosters creativity and self-expression. It provides the space for ideas to flow freely and for you to engage in activities that ignite your passion. Allow yourself to explore new interests, engage in artistic pursuits, or simply daydream. These moments of solitude can be a breeding ground for inspiration and personal growth. It is important to note that finding time for solitude does not mean isolating yourself from others or avoiding social interactions altogether. It is about creating a healthy balance between being with others and spending quality time with yourself. By finding this balance, you cultivate a deeper sense of self-awareness and establish stronger connections with others. So finding time for short periods of being alone is essential for personal growth and self-discovery. Use this time for self-reflection, self-care, and creative expression. Embrace the tranquility and clarity that solitude brings. Remember, by nurturing a relationship with yourself, you enhance your overall well-being and deepen your connection with the world around you. Number six, build relationships by being true to yourself. Building relationships is a fundamental aspect of human life, and doing so by being true to yourself is key. When you embrace your authenticity and show up as your genuine self, you attract people who appreciate and value you for who you truly are. Authenticity forms the foundation of meaningful connections. By being true to yourself, you create an environment of trust, openness, and vulnerability. This allows others to feel comfortable in expressing their true selves as well, fostering deeper and more genuine relationships. When building relationships, it is important to prioritize quality over quantity. Seek out individuals who align with your values, interests, and aspirations. Surround yourself with people who support and uplift you, while also challenging you to grow. These connections will nourish your soul and contribute to your personal development. Being true to yourself in relationships means setting boundaries and honoring your needs and values. Communicate your thoughts, feelings, and desires honestly and respectfully. Don't be afraid to express your opinions or assert your boundaries. Authentic relationships thrive on open and honest communication. Remember that building relationships is a two-way street. 
just as you strive to be true to yourself, allow others the space to be authentic as well. Embrace their individuality, respect their perspectives, and celebrate their uniqueness. Encourage open dialogue and active listening to foster understanding and connection. Authentic relationships also require empathy and compassion. Seek to understand others' experiences and perspectives without judgment. Show genuine care and support for their well-being. By practicing empathy, you create a safe and nurturing environment where deep connections can flourish. In the process of building relationships, it is important to remember that not all connections will be lifelong. Some relationships may naturally evolve or come to an end. Embrace these changes with grace and gratitude for the lessons learned. Trust that the right people will enter your life at the right time. So building relationships by being true to yourself is a powerful way to cultivate meaningful connections. Embrace your authenticity, set boundaries, and communicate openly. Surround yourself with individuals who appreciate and value you for who you are. Practice empathy and compassion in your interactions. Remember, authentic relationships enrich your life and contribute to your personal growth and well-being. Number seven, remember how valuable you are. In your journey of becoming who you really are, it is essential to remember how valuable you are. Recognizing and embracing your inherent worth and uniqueness is crucial for your self-esteem, confidence, and overall well-being. You are a unique individual with a set of qualities, talents, and experiences that make you one of a kind. Your perspectives, skills, and contributions have the potential to make a positive impact on the world around you. Embrace this understanding and let it fuel your sense of self-worth. Remember that your value is not determined by external factors such as achievements, possessions, or societal standards. Your worth is inherent and independent of these external measures. You are valuable simply by being yourself with all your strengths, flaws, and imperfections. It can be easy to forget your value in a world that often emphasizes comparison and self-doubt. However, by consciously reminding yourself of your worth, you cultivate a positive self-image and a resilient mindset. Take time to reflect on your accomplishments, big or small. Celebrate your achievements and acknowledge the progress you have made. Recognize the unique qualities and strengths that you bring to the table. Embrace self-compassion and treat yourself with kindness and respect. Surround yourself with people who uplift and appreciate you. Seek out relationships that support your growth and well-being. Surrounding yourself with positive influences reinforces your sense of value and reminds you of the impact you have on others. Practice self-care as a way to honor your value. Take care of your physical, mental, and emotional well-being. Prioritize activities that bring you joy, relaxation, and fulfillment. Nourish your body with nutritious food. Engage in regular exercise and prioritize restful sleep. By investing in self-care, you affirm your worth and prioritize your overall well-being. Lastly, remember that you have the power to define your own worth. Do not let external opinions or societal pressures diminish your sense of value. Trust in yourself and your abilities. Believe in your potential to grow, learn, and make a difference in the world. So, remembering how valuable you are is essential for embracing Recognize your inherent worth, celebrate your accomplishments, and surround yourself with positive influences. Practice self-care and prioritize your well-being. Trust in yourself and believe in your potential. Remember, you are unique, valuable, and deserving of love, respect, and happiness. In the teachings of Marcus Aurelius, we find a profound philosophy that encourages individuals to embark on a journey of self-discovery and personal growth. By being open to our experiences, embracing our individuality, and cultivating authentic relationships, we can become who we truly are. Remember that personal growth is a continuous process, and change is natural. Embrace your true self with confidence, and remember the inherent value you possess. Let Marcus Aurelius' wisdom inspire you on your path to becoming who you really are.
Welcome to the full guide on how to implement Stoicism into your own life. In this video, we'll walk you through the essential principles and practices of Stoic philosophy, helping you cultivate wisdom, resilience, and inner peace. Let's start. Find out how the ancient philosophy of Stoicism can help you control your feelings and live a happier, more fulfilling life. Did you know that Stoicism is an ancient philosophy that was started in Athens around 300 BCE, has grown in favor over the past few years as a way to deal with the problems of modern life. A well-known research institute did a poll and found that more than 70% of people said that bringing stoic ideas to their daily lives helped them. It gives a unique view on how to live a full and worthwhile life. It focuses on developing character. Mindfulness helps people build up their emotional strength and mental toughness. Self-reflection by knowing what we can change and what we can't. This brief explains how Stoicism helps us find inner peace even when the world around us is a mess. We will look at where Stoicism came from and what its main ideas are. We'll look at how it can be used in different parts of our lives, from making decisions to letting go, We'll talk about how to live a more healthy and happy life. Join us. As we start this journey of learning and peace through the ageless wisdom of Stoicism part one, where Stoicism came from. The roots of Stoicism can be found in ancient Greece. Greece, where this deep theory was first developed and won the hearts and minds of many people. Zeno of Citium came up with the idea of Stoicism in the early 3rd century BC. The Stoics thought that the lessons of Socrates, Plato, and Aristotle, as well as his own, were the best way to live. That the main goal of life is to be happy by living in harmony with nature and reason. Stoicism became popular in the Roman state, especially among. These Stoic philosophers, who include Seneca, Epictetus, and Marcus Aurelius put an emphasis on the cloud runs business, but winning today requires the right cloud services. Accelerator as a service from Siemens, built for all industries and all business. Ex they think that the way to real happiness is through self-discipline, inner peace, and spiritual morality that things outside of a person shouldn't affect their happiness or peace of mind. Stoics also put a lot of importance on building a good character. They thought that virtue was things like knowledge and courage, moderation and fairness, were important to live a good life according to what they taught. Having a good life meant that your deeds were in line with your beliefs, with general values, instead of being influenced by their own wants or forces from the outside. Self-control and staying uninterested in what's going on around you. Outside of our control, Stoics tried to develop an unshakable sense of calm in the face of life's problems. This. Philosophy tells us to pay attention to our own ideas and deeds. Stoics don't worry about things they can't change as they move on to the next part. Theory of virtue. It's easy to see how important these qualities are for understanding Stoicism's main ideas. Part two, the Stoic view of good behavior. Imagine a life in which you don't have to worry about. This is not the case in Stoicism, where you don't have to worry about being good or decent at all. Most important is the idea of character. In Stoicism, honor means moral greatness is made up of things like knowledge, courage, fairness, and self-discipline. The Stoics thought that these traits were necessary for a good life. Stoic thought virtue is seen as the best thing and the reason why people live. The Stoics thought that the only way to be truly happy is to work on developing good traits. The Stoics stressed that virtue is something that should be practiced constantly in every part of one's life. They think that developing character is up to us and can be done through reason and self-discipline. 
Situations outside of our control shouldn't tell us what to do or affect how happy we are. By following the idea, people can focus on building their character and living in harmony with nature. Even when things are hard, a person with character can find peace and calm. The Stoics think that people can get through life's challenges if they have good traits like knowledge and self-control. In its basic form, the Stoic theory of virtue tells us to face problems with courage and calm. That the only way to be truly happy is to live by moral standards, no matter what the world throws at you. At us, if we focus on building good qualities like knowledge, bravery, kindness and discipline of oneself. Now that this is clear, we can find peace within ourselves. How about we talk about the... The dichotomy of control is a big part of Stoicism. It refers to the question, what can you control and can't be taken care of? Part three, the two types of control. What can be handled and what can't accept the idea of the difference between control and figure out what we can change and what we can't. Stoic theory says that there are. There are things in life that we can control and change, and there are also things that we can't. This difference is important for living a good life in the world of things we can control. Control the way we think, feel, and act. These are the parts of who we are. We can shape and lead ourselves toward good ends by becoming more self-aware and self-discipline lets us choose how to react to outside events and keep our inner peace. On the other hand, there are many things that are out of a person's control, things outside of our power, like the views of other people, nature tragedies, or even accidents. Stoicism tells us not to waste time thinking about things outside of our control, and instead to focus on how we handle them. By accepting what we can't change, we get rid of things we don't need to worry about. Being sad and finding tranquility in the middle of chaos, figuring out this dichotomy, helps us focus on what's most important and acquire traits like wisdom. Be brave, fairness and moderation. We know that real happiness comes from Instead of looking for approval from others or depending on things we can't control, we should work on developing these traits in ourselves. As we move on to the next section about how to use awareness and stoicism, it's clear that the first part was A. It's clear that if we accept the idea of the split of power, we set up a strong foundation for getting what we want. Let's look at the ways in which being aware can help us take control of our thoughts. Being fully present in the here and now might help us get past problems. The fourth part, clarity and composure, is about how to practice awareness and stoicism. Practicing mindfulness in our daily lives gives us a chance to learn more about our thinking, feelings and actions that help us deal with problems with clarity and confidence. Peace of mind. Mindfulness is an important part of Stoicism because it lets us do things like, by bringing conscious awareness to the moment, we can watch our inner experiences without judging them or getting attached to them. Present time, we can stop caring about what's going on around us and focus on what is. When we practice awareness, we learn to watch our thoughts and feelings without getting caught up in them. We don't have to get caught up in them. Instead of acting on impulse or letting bad feelings take over, we can take a step back. Objectively look at the situation at hand. This helps us act wisely instead of acting on impulse. Mindfulness also helps us avoid acts that might make the problem worse. Notice trends in the way we think and feel by keeping an eye on these. Patterns. We can learn about repeated thought patterns or harmful ideas that might be holding us back from growing. With this knowledge, we have the chance to question and change these thoughts in a more positive way. 
Mindfulness practice also makes it easier to fully appreciate the present moment. Engage with the present moment by giving each event your full attention. Savor the moment, whether it's a simple daily job or a big event in our lives. Find the beauty in life and be thankful even when things are hard. This will help you build endurance and mental strength. Stability. We'll talk about how Stoicism tells us to see problems as opportunities. Whole lot of chocolate and whoa, toffee and almonds. Hershey's nuggets, all in on chocolate. When you shop on Amazon.com, there's a good chance you're buying from an independent seller like Kyle. Yeah. Chance to grow instead of something to avoid or fight against. Section 5. Building up your strength. Building strength and mental health is like making a shield against the storms of life that gives us the strength and grace to get through them. Stoicism teaches us that we can get better at these things if we work at it. Resilience is a term for how we deal with problems. Resilience is the ability to get back up when things go wrong, and mental stability is the ability to stay calm and balanced. One way to build resilience is to keep an open mind no matter what is going on around you. Accepting the idea of love. Fadi, which means love of fate, means to accept what is. Whatever happens, see it as essential and learn from it instead of trying to stop it or complaining about it. Chances to get better, we can train our minds to do well in the face of trouble. Stoic practices like negative vision also help us get ready for challenges by making us think about what could go wrong. Practicing how we would deal with them. By practicing awareness and detachment, you can keep your emotions stable. From outside factors, Stoics tell us to pay attention to what we can control. Our thoughts. Thoughts and deeds, instead of focusing too much on things we can't change by realizing that outside events are neutral and don't define us, happiness or a sense of worth. We can build inner strength that isn't affected by the ups and downs of life. Downs is another important part of being grateful and appreciative. Stoic philosophy says that we can be happy by putting our attention on what we have instead of what we don't. In the present, this sense of thanks helps us keep things in perspective when things are hard. Even though we face problems, we have a lot in our lives. Building grit and emotional security takes work. Effort and practice can be turned into stoic ideals, like amor fati, being aware with detachment and thanks, can protect ourselves from the storms of life while keeping a steady sense of peace and calm. Before we move on to the next part about developing thanks, let's learn more about this practice. Improves our ability to deal with life's problems. Part six, learning to be thankful and appreciation. Gratitude and appreciation help us see the beauty in the world. Even in the smallest moments, make a medley of happiness and joy. When we choose to be grateful, we change our focus from what we don't have to what we do have. Acknowledging and appreciating the good things in our lives every day helps us stay strong. Us create a happy attitude by noticing the good things in our lives. We can deal with problems better. Of optimism and hope. This point of view tells us that even in the worst situations, there are always bright spots. Allows us to get over failures more easily as long as we are thankful for the lessons we've learned along the way. How praise also makes us feel better emotionally. When we take the time to enjoy the people, places and things that make us happy, we feel fulfilled. We become less depending on things outside of ourselves to make us happy. We are happy because we know that true happiness comes from within. Practicing thanks makes our relationships with others stronger Saying thank you to loved ones is a great way to do this. It helps people feel closer to each other and gives them a sense of love and bonding. 
us to let them know how important they are to us, and it inspires them to do the same by growing. With thanks and respect, we open ourselves up to living life to the fullest. The key is to accept both victories and setbacks with grace as we move from one stage to the next. Let's look at how these methods can be used to bring philosophical ideas to relationships. Strengthen our relationships without giving up our inner peace. Section 7. Using Stoic Ideas in Relationships Use conservative ideas to make your relationships stronger. Stoicism can help you make stronger relationships and keep your inner peace. By using Stoic ideas, we can learn how to handle our interactions with knowledge and equality. Ideals like focusing on what we can change and accepting that life will always have ups and downs. One important part of Stoicism is to make your relationships better and more satisfying. In relationships is realizing we can't control what other people do or how they feel. Instead of trying to change or control others, we should pay attention to our. This means taking responsibility for our own thoughts, emotions, and actions. By being aware of our own responses and working on self-awareness, we can avoid. Accepting that relationships are naturally complicated is another important thing to keep in mind. People who come and go in and out of our lives do so for different reasons. Point. Knowing that everything is temporary helps us enjoy the present and treasure the time we have with. It also helps us let go of goals or ties that can hold us back. Lead to failure or pain. Stoicism teaches us to be grateful in our relationships. Admiration. We can show thanks by noticing the good things about our connections and letting the people who make our lives better know how much we appreciate them. This change in attitude creates a stronger sense of connection and putting stoic ideas into practice in our relationships helps us build stronger ties. Handle these relationships with more knowledge, acceptance and gratitude. If we show gratitude, we can make stronger relationships and keep our intercom at the same time. If we are ready to accept that everything changes, we can pay more attention to what we can control. Practice self-awareness, and when we learn to be thankful, now let's. Study how Stoicism relates to the goal of happiness in Section 8. Happiness. In our last conversation, we talked about how Stoic ideas can be used in relationships. Now, let's talk about another part of Stoicism, which is the value of self-control and reason. Stoicism teaches us that true happiness has nothing to do with how hard you try to find it. Lies inside of us and can be reached by living in harmony with nature and developing values like. As long as we have knowledge, courage, temperance and justice, we can live in peace. The Stoics said that outward events don't affect whether or not a person is happy. Our happiness. Instead, our own thoughts and decisions determine our mental well-being. Viewpoint. We stop depending on outside things to make us happy, and instead look for support. We don't focus on getting things from other people or buying things. With patience and strength, we learn to enjoy the simple things in life the present moment. But it's important to remember that stoicism doesn't mean you should hide your feelings, or, instead of ignoring that they exist, it pushes us to recognize and understand them. By keeping a clear head and practicing awareness and self-reflection, we can gain a better understanding of ourselves. With this grounding and stoic mindset, we can learn more about ourselves and handle the ups and downs of life better. Pleasure being something we make for ourselves instead of something we get from other things. Fulfillment. Let's look at how stoicism helps us deal with hard times without losing sight of what's important to us. Section nine of Sense of Intercom is about the stoic way of dealing with problems, meeting life's problems head on. 
Stoics tell us that the best way to keep our inner peace is to see problems as opportunities. Instead of seeing hard times as obstacles to be avoided or as something to be got ten over. Denied, the Stoic method tells us to face them with a sense of toughness and acceptance. Philosophy tells us that bad things happen to everyone and that we can deal with them better by accepting them with grace and... The Stoic lessons stress how important it is to develop strength and knowledge. By moving our attention to what we can control instead of letting outside circumstances take over, view from what we can't change to what we can. This gives us the power to act and make a difference. Stoicism teaches us to let go of things we can't control when we're going through hard times. Stoics, on the other hand, stress the power of our own ideas and deeds, push us to see losses as chances to grow as people. They believe that meeting child angers, we can become better versions of ourselves if we face problems head on and learn from them. Problems act as a catalyst for growth because they test our character and help us get ready for what's to come. That comes dull. A fancy cube. Cooling flavor crystals. Fancier. But too fancy. Ah, just the right amount of fancy. Icebreaker. Smooth. Fancy. <laughs> By taking this calm approach to problems, we can get through them. We can handle the unavoidable ups and downs of life better if we embrace obstacles as chances to learn and grow, not as sources of stress or worry. In the next part, we learn how to look at life more objectively. Using stoic ideas to deal with stress and worry, we'll look at ways to put these ideas into practice. Philosophy in Everyday Life, Part 10, Dealing with Stress and Worry by Stoic Principles. If we adopt a Stoic way of thinking, we can learn to deal with life's ups and downs. Ups and downs with intercom and resilience are things that Stoicism teaches. Understanding this theory lets us know that worry and stress are caused by how we think about and respond to events. To deal with worry well, the first step is to realize what we can control. Stoics think that the mind is the only thing we can control. We can't change our thoughts or feelings. We can't control what happens, but we can choose how we see and react to it. Mindfulness and self-awareness make it possible to watch our thoughts without judging them. Choose actions that are good for you and accept that things outside of you will change. Stoics taught that everything is temporary, which helps us let go of things. Last but not least, Stoicism urges people to focus on what's important. Personal growth is more important than living in a good way and making good decisions. Even when things are hard, outward approval makes people happy. Stoic ideas and stories can help you deal with stress and anxiety. In a word, this means recognizing that you have control over your life, their thoughts and feelings, accepting that everything is temporary and focusing on. Taking these ideas to heart will help you find peace within yourself. The talk will be about stoicism and practicing self-discipline as ways to help personal growth of what will be talked about in the next few lines. Stoicism and art of self-discipline. When we learn the art of self-discipline, we can develop inner strength. Self-discipline is at the heart of Stoicism. It helps people gain strength and grow as people. By following this attitude, people can face life's problems with courage and fortitude. With self-discipline, we learn how to control our wants and emotions. 
Stoicism stresses the importance of being able to think things through and make choices that are in line with our morals and long-term goals. Learning to stop caring about what other people do and how it affects you is a key part of self-discipline. We know that there are many things outside of our control, such as what other people do, people or events that we can't control. Stoicism tells us to keep our focus on the things we can change, like our own ideas, attitudes and actions, a need for approval or success from others, usually accompanied by worry and stress. But if we change how we look at things, now that they didn't have to deal with these bad feelings, Stoics stressed how important it was to form good habits. Self-discipline. We can improve our willpower and get past problems by practicing self-discipline over and over again. Set clear goals and make daily routines that support those goals to break bad habits or addictions. Stoics not only teach themselves how to be self-disciplined, but they also teach others how to do so. Advocates for simplicity in material belongings and income. They think that too much connection to things and money is unhealthy. Material things can make people unhappy and cause them to suffer needlessly. Stoics tell us to be happy with what we have. Focusing on good things about ourselves, like knowledge, courage, justice. As we move on to the next part, which is called the Stoic view on temperance, we'll talk about. It's important to remember that Stoicism teaches us important lessons about how to deal with money and belongings. Focus on what's inside instead of what's outside, section 12. The Stoic view on matrile. The more we learn about Stoicism and the art of self-discipline, the less we care about things and money. Now we'll talk about how the Stoics felt about wealth and material things. Stoics thought that real happiness doesn't come from things outside of yourself. They said that depending on material things for happiness is a sure way to be unhappy. According to the Stoics, things like happiness and sadness are always going to change. Wealth and worldly things have nothing to do with virtue, and they should be viewed as such. It's not wrong to be rich or to have material things, but they shouldn't be the center of our lives. Instead, Stoics stressed how important it was to define our sense of self-worth by developing inequalities like knowledge, courage, justice, and self-control. Stoic philosophy tells us that putting too much value on things outside of ourselves can cause us to become attached to and dependent on those things. When we depend on these things alone for our happiness, we leave ourselves open to their loss or destruction. By comparison, when we try to be good and focus on what's inside us, when we get things like moral character and personal growth, we find permanent happiness that can't be taken away. By knowing the difference between what we can control and what we can't, our own thoughts and acts versus things that happen to us, that we can't change. Estoicism helps us get to a place where we care less about things. This detachment from our things helps us face life's challenges with more equanimity and strength. As we learn more about Stoicism and the lessons it has to teach us about how to deal with change, part 13, Stoicism and accepting things as they are. Stoics try to be happy even though they know that everything changes. Stoicism teaches us to find comfort in accepting that everything in life is temporary. Everything in this world is temporary, and it can change at any time. We should let go of our ties because nothing lasts forever. Instead, we should let go of our connection to the outside world and work on growing our. By understanding that life is short-lived, we free ourselves from needless stress and worry. We know from our own pain that trying to hold on to things or people will only lead to anger and failure. When things get away from us, as they always do, Stoics argue for, taking each moment as it comes, knowing it could be our last. 
When we understand that everything is temporary, we can enjoy the present moment more deeply. Our temporary, we become more aware of the beauty and wealth of. With each passing second, we learn not to take anything for granted and to find joy in even the even the easiest pleasures can be made more enjoyable by remembering that life is short. Stoicism teaches us that we're going to die and it tells us to live with a sense of what's important. Knowing that time is limited and having a sense of urgency and purpose is better than spending time on. Stoics tell us not to worry about small things or chase after shallow wants. Morality and wisdom are what really count. In a word, Stoicism gives us the knowledge too. See how important it is to accept that reality changes. Once we accept this, we can find comfort in it, knowing that nothing lasts forever, and instead choose to live each moment to the fullest. In the next line, we'll talk about how Stoicism can help you live each moment to the best. Help people find meaning and purpose in life, even if they don't rely on anything outside of themselves. Factors that affect whether or not they are satisfied or validated in section 14, finding meaning. Through the lessons of Stoicism, we can learn about the meaning and goal of Stoicism. Stoicism teaches us that the only way to give our lives more real meaning and purpose is to look at the world as it really is. Real happiness doesn't come from other people or their surroundings, but from within ourselves. Focus on the things we can do something about and accept with serenity the things we can't. By thinking this way, we can build a better world that goes beyond what we can do alone. Sense of purpose and meaning that is not affected by what is happening in the outside world. Stoicism stresses living in harmony with nature and with other people. Stoics believed that the highest good is being a good person in everything you do. Work on improving our moral character to find happiness and satisfaction in life. This means making it a goal. Lead a life that is full of knowledge, courage, kindness, and self-discipline. Encourages us to be good, but it also tells us to be aware and thankful in our daily lives. Even the most boring things in our lives can have value if we look for it. Practice being fully present in every moment and enjoy the simple pleasures that life has to offer. To offer stern ways like negative imagery, which is picturing the worst things that could happen. Losing something or someone close to us can also make us value what we have. Stoicism can help you feel more grateful and grow a stronger sense of gratitude if you do this. Finding meaning and purpose through Stoicism takes a change in perspective. Focus from outside accomplishments or goods to inner qualities like virtue. By focusing on what really means to us and being aware and grateful can find a deep sense of meaning that isn't based on temporary situations or material wealth as we do. If you learn more about Stoicism and how it relates to the practice of detachment, section 15 makes it clear how these lessons can help us find more peace of mind and mental strength. During our study of Stoicism, we talked about Stoicism and the practice of detachment. We have looked at the many ways this old theory can help us live happy, successful lives. We've learned that inner peace and a sense of meaning and purpose go hand in hand. When we accept the things we can't change and focus on the things we can, we can learn to be happy. Stoicism, on the other hand, gives us not only a way to deal with the things we can change, but also a way to live our lives. It gives people not only a way to deal with life's problems, but also a way to distance themselves from those problems. When? When talking about Stoicism, the idea of detachment does not mean becoming mentally numb, mental distance from other people. Instead, it means letting go of our ties to the Stoics are people who think that happiness can be found no matter what happens in the outside world or what other people do. 
When happiness comes from within and isn't based on things that come from the outside, learn to take whatever life throws at us with calm and without letting happiness or sadness take over. We should make the practice of detachment a normal part of our lives. The practice of detachment helps us stay calm and in control. Unshaken by life's ups and downs, it teaches us to pay attention to what really matters. Matters our own thoughts, deeds and ideals, instead of letting outside. By practicing detachment, we can build strength in the face of things we can't change. This part of Stoicism teaches people how to stay calm in the face of trouble and keep a sense of humor. Us, for one of its most important lessons, the Stoic view on death and mortality, chapter 16 of the Stoic. Stoic philosophy is a way of thinking about death and dying. It becomes a gentle wave that takes us into the unknown, like a ship floating out into the vast and strange sea. Stoicism gives us a unique way to think about death and our own existence. Us to face the fact that we will die and find comfort in the fact that it will happen. From a Stoic point of view, death is not something to be afraid of or try to avoid. Stoics thought that everything in life is temporary and open to change. They saw this as a normal part of the world. They taught us, among other things, that death is just a return to nature. This view of death gives us freedom from the troubles of life and the limits of our mortal bodies. Accept and even enjoy the fact that we only have a short time on earth. It tells us to live every day to the fullest and make the most of every moment. We should enjoy every moment we have instead of worrying about what comes after this life. Stoicism tells us to pay attention to living well in the present by, recognizing that we will die and accepting it as an important part of being human. When we have a clearer idea of what we want out of life, we are better able to go after it more aware of what really counts in our relationships, gifts to society, and most importantly, to our own growth as people. So Stoicism gives us a new way to look at death, one that doesn't see it as the end of the world, not as something to fear or avoid, but as a chance to grow as a person and think about oneself. There is a place in the world where we can live more worthwhile lives, full of meaning and satisfaction if we are ready to accept our own death and act in a good way. In the light of this, we can learn more about how it links to Stoicism's focus on good behavior. When we know more about these ideas about death as seen through the eyes of Stoicism, section 17, Stoicism and the value of doing good things are the keys to a happy life. Stoicism tells us that the only way to be truly happy is to live by good ideals. Happiness and satisfaction do not come from outside events or things. Morality, according to the Stoics, lies not in what other people do, but in how we treat ourselves. Stoicism says that happiness is the best thing and should be sought above all else, living a socially righteous life in every aspect of our lives. Us to work on things like being wise, brave, and self-disciplined. If we act in a way that is consistent with these, we can live a life of moral character and harmony. Values. Stoicism points out that it's not enough to just be good. We have to turn our thoughts, ideas, or plans into actions. Stoicism tells us that the things we do shape who we are and decide what kind of person we become. Take responsibility for our decisions and try to live according to our morals by acting in ways that are good. Ideals, we can find meaning and purpose even in the worst situations. 
Stoicism teaches us that we can't change things outside of ourselves, but we can change how we react to them. Is up to us. By doing good things, we can make ourselves stronger. Stoics say that it's our strength of character that lets us handle life's ups and downs with grace and equanimity. Mindset, doing good things, is something you have to work at. To live a life full of value, you need to think about yourself often. We need self-discipline and a strong commitment to our own growth. We can only develop inner serenity and live a worthwhile life based on moral duty if we take steps to do so. Now, let's learn more about Stoic ethics. Stoics tried to live by good ideas and put them into practice. Section 18 of Stoic Ethics looks at the idea of moral duty and moral responsibility leading up to the idea of moral responsibility. Stoic ethics show us how we shape our own character and fate. Stoicism says that we are not helpless victims of fate, but rather active partners in making it. In the course of our lives, what we do and choose has effects, and it's up to us to deal with them. Stoic ethics show how important it is for us to be good and take responsibility for our choices. Every part of our lives should be guided by knowledge and virtue, not by passion and feeling. Life, we are told to acquire qualities like knowledge, courage, fairness, and self-control. Traits are like a road plan that show us how to make choices that are in line with morals. We can develop a strong moral character that is in line with the rules of nature if we always do things like Stoicism emphasizes these traits, but it also admits that humans make mistakes. Humans who make mistakes when we think too quickly or act without thinking. Stoics think that it's important to admit when we're wrong and take responsibility for them. The only way to be truly free is to accept our moral obligations and try to do the right thing. Improving ourselves through self-reflection and self-discipline is part of our moral duty. Stoic ethics teach us that how we treat others is just as important as how we treat ourselves. We have a job to treat others with justice, kindness, and respect. Care about the well-being of those around us and try to get along with them. Because Stoic principles were based on kindness and understanding, the we can see the importance of moral duty in how it makes us who we are and what our lives will be like. If we understand our natural frailty, we can actively work to make the world a better place for ourselves and others. People, while also accepting the good things about being human, like knowledge and courage. Fairness and self-control are important, but now let's look at how Stoics find inner peace. Tranquility, Chapter 19, Stoic Practices for Inner Peace and Tranquility, Chapter 20, Tranquility. We can find inner peace and calm by using simple Stoic methods that give us the power to take charge of our feelings and find peace despite the chaos around us. Stoicism is a set of routines and ideas that can help us get what we want out of life. Even when things are hard, we can be in a state of peace and calm if we are in charge of our own lives. Stoics said we shouldn't waste our time or energy thinking about our wants. We shouldn't worry about things we can't change. Instead, we should only worry about things we can change. By coming to terms with this idea, we can keep ourselves from having unhealthy thoughts. Instead of focusing on the effects of outside events, we should work on cultivating good traits like knowledge, fairness, courage, and hard work are also very important. This means picturing the worst case events so we can be ready for them. By thinking about loss or trouble before it happens, we prepare ourselves mentally for what might come. Stoics also stressed how important it was to stay calm and strong in tough situations. Mindfulness and living in the present moment by fully connecting with our current experiences without thinking about. 
we can grow a sense of inner peace by letting go of regrets from the past or worries about the future. Peace and happiness. Practicing thanks also has a big impact on role in Stoic philosophy by thinking about the good things in our lives often. We learn to be grateful for things big and small, and this helps us. In a word, Stoic habits can help you keep things in perspective when things are hard. That can be used to try to find inner peace and harmony so we can deal with the problems life throws at us. Throws at us with more peace of mind if we focus on the parts of our lives that we can directly control. If we train ourselves to be aware of the here and now, and if we also learn to appreciate what we have, these activities are the building blocks for growing the traits of courage and the next part, section 20, we'll talk about courage. In our study of Stoicism, we looked at Stoicism and the values of courage and fortitude. Practices for inner peace and calmness, we have looked at different. Let's now turn our attention to the traits of confidence and fortitude, which are based on this old idea lie at the heart of Stoicism. But courage in the framework of Stoicism doesn't just mean. It includes more than just physical bravery in the face of danger. It also includes mental courage, the ability to stick to one's beliefs and act in a good way, even when things don't go as planned. Stoics think that real strength lies in being strong in the face of trouble or temptation. Fortitude is similar to courage in that it helps people stay calm and strong when life gets hard, but focuses on how the Stoics teach us to be patient and strong. By building up our resolve, we can see problems as chances to grow instead of giving up or getting angry, can build the kind of mental strength that lets us deal with life's expected challenges with grace and respect. By practicing these qualities, we can develop a sense of inner power and calm that can't be shaken. External situations, instead of giving in to fear or giving up because of hard times, as we go on, we can face them with calm confidence, knowing that they are part of the natural order of things. On our way through Stoicism, let's look at how it thinks about time. This part will show how Stoics feel about how quickly time passes and what gives them comfort. Embracing the present moment, stoic views on time and the current moment, accept that time is fleeting and throw yourself into the beauty of the present moment, because true tranquility can only be found in these brief times, offers helpful ideas about how we should deal with time and reminds us to make the most of every second. Stoics thought that thinking about mistakes from the past or worrying about what will happen in the future only takes away from the present. Stoic thought says that we should fully feel and enjoy the moment. Time is a valuable resource that shouldn't be lost. We shouldn't worry about what's coming next or miss what's already gone. Instead, we should focus on living in the source now. We can reach a state of inner peace by being aware of our thoughts and behaviors in the present moment. Stoic views on time also stress the value of happiness and accepting that it will change is the same as accepting that everything, including ourselves, can change. This understanding sets us free because it lets us let go of ties and demands, us from needless pain caused by holding to things that are doomed to disappear. Stoic ideals mean to treat every moment as a chance to grow and get better. By being aware and in the moment, we can learn from everything. 
Experience that life gives us, whether it's happy or hard, every moment can teach us something. In a word, knowing that time passes makes us more likely to look for comfort in things that will last. The here and now, instead of getting stuck in regrets about what has happened in the past, or we can give people a sense of peace when they are worried about what the future holds. We can learn more about ourselves and live more worthwhile lives if we pay attention to the present moment. All moving on to our next topic about Stoicism's search for knowledge. This focus on being present gives us a solid foundation for trying to learn more about ourselves and the world. Around us, without losing sight of what really matters, this wonderful adventure we call life. Section 22 of Stoicism and the Search for Wisdom shows how the power of learning as we go on a journey of self-discovery and enlightenment to figure out what life is all about. Stoicism shows us how to get deep insights into who we really are. Stoic philosophy says that seeking knowledge is the most important part of living a good and happy life. Not just about gathering information or being smart. It's about knowing who you are and what your job is. Stoicism is a way of thinking about the world and how to live in balance with it. Wisdom is the process of getting a deep understanding of how different parts of our lives really work. It gets us thinking about what we can control and what we can't. Focus on building principles like bravery, justice, balance, and with the knowledge that comes from having lived, we can deal with the problems that life throws at us. Stoics believe that knowledge will come if we develop these traits through careful thought and hard work. It helps us to see our wants and ties from a different point of view through self-examination and reflection. Can pick out the things that really matter in life. Ethics. Inner peace. By adopting knowledge as a way of life, we can separate ourselves from temporary outside conditions and shallow pursuits. A single driving idea in our lives, we can develop a strong sense of focus and purpose. We know that real happiness comes from within, not from the outside world. As we learn more about Stoicism and its ideas, we see that happiness comes from within. In the next part, we'll learn about the art of letting go. Before we do, let's think about how wisdom is an anchor in the middle of life's ups and downs. Uncertainty is a light that leads us to peace, even when we're going through hard times. 23. Stoicism and the Art of Letting Go In our look at Stoicism and the Art of Letting Go, we've looked at how this old theory tells us to pursue knowledge. Seek knowledge and understanding if you want to live a good life. We've learned that wisdom is not just an accumulation of information, educational practice, but rather a way to put what we know to use so we can get around. Let's move forward by facing life's problems with calm and grace. Lessons of Stoicism and look at how they have affected the art of letting go in a big way. Stoicism says that the way to real happiness is to stop caring about how things turn out in the outside world. It forces us to stop trying to change things and instead accept them for what they are. Number 20, the elite chicken and bacon ranch built with rotisserie style chicken and double cheese. parts of our lives that we have no control over, like the actions of other people or certain settings we might find ourselves in at the moment, urges us to develop inner strength to deal with what we face and to accept it with peace. Facts that free us from unnecessary pain and keep us from having to fight against things we can't change. We can find peace even in the middle of chaos if we learn to be detached and accept that everything changes. Everything. So Stoic thinkers tell us to focus on what is under our control. 
control, including our ideas, deeds and emotions, instead of being worried about. This change in viewpoint gives us the power to separate ourselves from things we can't change. Learning to let go can help us feel less stressed about the outside world and more at peace with ourselves. Difficult in a world that is always sending us demands and wants. We can get better at making decisions, though, if we use calm ideas. In the next part, we'll look at how Stoicism can give you a clearer mind and better judgment. Useful advice on how to make good decisions that are in line with our values without being swayed by outside forces. Section 24. Using Stoic Ideas in Situations with Stresses or Ties. Mastering the art of letting go and making good decisions can be done by using Stoic philosophy. When it comes to making decisions, Stoicism teaches us to pay attention to what is. When we take care of the things we can and leave the rest to nature. When making a choice, we can use this rule by first figuring out what we can control and what we can't. When we accept that we can't control what happens outside of ourselves, we can change. Stoicism also urges us to make choices based on our own beliefs, virtues and sense of right and wrong. To think about how our decisions will affect us in the long run, instead of letting short-term wants or feelings guide us, should judge each choice based on how well it fits with our moral sense and our general well-being. Another important Stoic concept for making decisions is that we should not act on impulse or give in to social forces. Practice not caring about what happens outside of ourselves instead of caring too much about one thing. We should accept the idea that honor is more about the way things are done than about the end result. Intended results, we become stronger when bad things happen and better able to react. Stoic ideas can be applied to a wider range of unexpected situations. The decision-making process helps us let go of things that aren't good for us. When we choose choices that are in line with our core beliefs and values, it frees us from having to. Letting outside things that we can't change control us instead of letting those things control us. If we turn our attention inward to our own inner traits and personal growth, we can live a life that is rich and full. If we make choices based on knowledge and peace, they will be more fulfilling with these rules and use them as a guide. Now that we've gotten that out of the way, let's talk about some. How to be a good Stoic and live a worthwhile life. Section 25. Stoic ways of living for. Let's look at some useful Stoic techniques that can help you live a full life. One important habit that can help us live a truly happy life is being helpful. By thinking what it would be like to lose something we love, we learn to value it more and not take it for granted. This exercise helps us be more thankful and keeps us from becoming too addicted to things. The practice of desire is another strong way to get what you want, whether it's things or people. Stoics think that our wants and ties can cause us pain, so they say we should look at our wants. By adopting detachment from outcomes and asking how important they are, Stoics also stress how important it is to let go of sadness and find happiness in the present. Writing or meditation can be used for self-reflection and pondering. This technique lets us look at our thoughts, feelings and behavior. Marcus Aurelius, a wise philosopher from ancient times, once said that the key to shaping our future lies in focusing on what we can control and appreciating what we have. In the past, without the internet and fewer distractions, this was simpler. But in today's world, with so many things screaming for our attention, it seems much harder to steer our own future. That's why we've put together some practical tips to help you take charge of your life, even in this busy, connected world. Let's explore how you can confidently shape your own path 
without depending on others. This video is more than an hour long and is about how to find peace within yourself by following the ideas of Stoicism. We will talk about a lot of different things that, if you really apply them, will make your life a lot better. To start, I want to say that this video will be useful for your life. For the next few minutes, we'll show you how to be happy through Amor Fati, which means learning to accept everything that life throws at us. We will look at the dichotomy of life, which is a powerful tool that can help us make choices and find serenity in the middle of chaos. To keep tranquility and clarity in our lives, we will also find anti-Stoic habits that we should avoid. We will also learn how to incorporate the Stoic practice, develop inner strength, and become masters of our own lives. Using Stoicism as our guide, we will learn how to use Marcus Aurelius's reflections to make our days full and useful, while also learning the art of not putting things off. It can be hard to find peace and meaning in today's crazy world, but don't worry, Stoicism has the answer. Learn how to establish a daily habit that will bring you unrivaled balance, growth, and serenity as you explore the wisdom and usefulness of this old theory. As you try to live a better life, Stoicism and people like Epicurus, Seneca, and Marcus Aurelius can help you. Philosophies like these have been around for a long time and can still help you get stronger, calmer, and happier. Are you ready to change your life? Come on this journey of self-discovery with us as we talk about how to make a morning and evening routine that will help you reach your goals. Every morning, get up with a strong will and a sense of energy. Think about the four cardinal virtues, wisdom, courage, justice, and temperance. These are the moral standards that will help you make brave choices and always look for balance in all parts of your life. Being thankful will help you a lot. Be thankful for all the good things, people and events that make your life better. You will learn that being grateful makes you happy and frees you from any sense of being unhappy. Look forward to the day with a strong attitude. Face possible problems and wisely prepare to change and grow in the face of hardship as a form of negative thinking. Somber magic will come to life through your work. Write down your thoughts, feelings and notes in a notebook. This will shine like a lighthouse of wisdom and direction, showing you the way even when things get tough. Get ready to look tough and classy in front of the world. In a world full of distractions, learn how to stay focused and get things done. Always treat others with fairness and kindness, and your heart will be open to a greater knowledge of what it means to be human. When you're stressed, keep your cool and remember that you can only control what you can reach. You will be led by wisdom. When night falls, it's time to rest. Think about what happened during the day, learn from it, and move forward. Accept that you aren't perfect and make a promise to always get better. If you plan for tomorrow and walk a strong and brave road, you will have a future full of wisdom, courage, justice, and moderation. Use Stoicism as a tool to build your life the way you want it. Make your path to success unique by finding the method that works for your goals, values, and daily obligations. Take Stoicism and make it your own. Keep practicing Stoicism because you love it and make a plan that you stick to. The way of Stoicism leads to change and growth. Find out how to make Stoicism work in every part of your life. Bring wisdom, courage, fairness, and moderation into your job, relationships, and personal projects. In a world full of... It's simple. If you only have Medicare Parts A and B, there is no limit to how much you could pay out of pocket. You may be missing out on a plan with additional benefits and savings. Good news. You can enroll now in a Medicare Advantage plan, also known as a Part C plan, during the Medicare annual enrollment period. Change and uncertainty, Stoicism will help you stay balanced, strong, and at peace with yourself. Accept that your life has a reason and is clear. Follow the stern road by being strong and sure of what you want to do. 
Your wise friend will be with you most of the time, and every day will be a chance to learn and grow. In your search for a full and worthwhile life, may clarity and serenity always be with you. You can wake up with a heart full of joy and plenty if you practice thanks. The four cardinal values will guide you. Focus on all the good things in your life that make it better. You will learn that respect and thanks can get rid of any feeling of unhappiness or a strong wish. When you are truly thankful, you will start the day feeling full and happy, and you will be able to focus on what matters most. Develop the habit of being thankful for all the good things in your life, and always say thank you for things that have helped you move forward. They should all be included in your thanks. Visualizing bad things will help you get ready for the day. When you think about the problems and issues that might come up, don't worry. You're ready to face them with wisdom, courage, fairness, and moderation. By thinking about these situations and what might happen, you will build up a quiet strength that will help you change and grow when things go wrong. With this practice, you'll be able to handle the unknowns of the day without getting upset when things go wrong. Journal, very important. It's now time to write down your thoughts and wisdom. Stoics like Seneca and Marcus Aurelius found that writing in a notebook was very helpful. Set aside a few minutes every morning to write down your thoughts, feelings, and notes. You'll make a lighthouse of wisdom and love that will help you through the trials of modern life if you do this. Everyday life is always changing, and there may be times when we have to show how determined we are. Don't worry though, stoicism can help. By using a set of stoic techniques, you can keep your balance, build your resolve, and start your life's journey with grace and strength. Remember that you have wisdom within you when you're under stress. Use your mind and time to get away from things. Remember to focus on the things you can control and let go of the things you can't. You will be able to handle stress with calm, strength, and wisdom if you do this. The most important thing in life is to categorize and separate things so that you can see what is outside of your control and what is within your control. Where can I find good and bad? Not outside of what you can't control, but inside of you and the choices you make. Keep Epictetus's words in mind as you work to be grateful and strong. Stoicism will show you the way with its timeless wisdom. Know that every day is a chance to learn, grow, and get better when you wake up. On the stern road to a full and worthwhile life, you should live your life with focus and purpose. Turn things that are distracting you into chances to get things done. Today's fast-paced life is full of things that can confuse you. But as a strong stoic, you work on the virtue of temperance by being self-disciplined and avoiding excess. If these things happen, don't fight them. Instead, gently bring your mind back to the job at hand. You will feel calmer inside and be able to use your mind's power to reach your goals. Show the stoic values of justice, wisdom and kindness when you're with other people. Every interaction gives you the chance to leave a good image that lasts. Think about how what you say and do affects the people around you. Learn, grow, and gain a deeper understanding of what it's like to be human with each encounter. Today, I will have to deal with rudeness, disrespect, disloyalty, anger, and greed. This is all because the criminal doesn't know what is right or wrong. But for me, I've known for a long time what good is and how noble it is, what evil is and how small it is, and what the criminal, who is my brother, is. Not in the sense of a physical being, but as a human being with some divine power. So, none of this can hurt me, because I can't be a part of anything humiliating. My brother and I were both born to work together, just like a man's two hands, feet, eyes. With extreme grip, Scotch box lock shipping tape helps you box it. Or upper and lower rows of teeth. I can't be mad or upset with him either. 
it goes against the laws of nature for people to block each other, and anger or dislike is a type of blocking. Marcus Aurelius shows us how to deal with problems and grow stronger. In life, we face challenges we didn't expect, especially when things are going badly. These challenges can either make us stronger or break us. See these difficulties as chances for growth, brave Stoics. Face problems with ease by developing the guts and wisdom to do so. When you do negative thinking, trust the inner strength you've built up by following the calm way. You will learn from your mistakes and use them as steps toward personal growth and happiness if you do this. Get ready for a night full of wisdom and thought. Now that the sun is going down and the day is ending, look inside yourself. Think about what happened during the day and write down any problems, choices, or lessons you learned. Seneca once said, I will constantly keep watch over myself, and even more useful, I will review each day, because this is what makes us evil. None of us look back on our own lives. We only reflect on what we are about to do. Forgive yourself, and then work on getting better. Learn to forgive yourself with kindness and understanding. Personal growth is a process that never ends. Take responsibility for your mistakes and work to get better. As you continue to grow on your silent road, work on finding inner peace and accepting yourself. Using the wisdom you gained throughout the day, set goals for the new dawn. Make plans for the next day and make sure that you use calm traits in your choices, actions and encounters. You will set an example for a peaceful and meaningful life this way. Stay true to the principles of Stoicism and spend the evening relaxing before going to sleep. Do things to help you relax, like deep breathing or quiet thought. Relax your body and mind to get rid of the stress of the day. After a good night's sleep, you'll be ready to start each new day as a chance to learn and grow. The world can give us both the best and the worst things. A lot of the time we find health, happiness, love and joy. On the other hand, we often experience sorrow, pain, death, sickness and bad luck. Fair or unfavorable, life seems to flow like a river that we can't control and must often accept. Epicurus stated, don't fight the strings of fate, embrace them, for it is only in accepting them that you find inner peace. Accepting or embracing one's own fate is called amor fati in the language of Stoicism. This means seeing your life, with all of its ups and downs, as the best gift you could have gotten. It sounds easy to say, but it's not possible to do. What could make us love pain? How can we show thanks for things like the death of a loved one? How can we see beauty in pain? Some people might have thought the Stoics were crazy when they came up with the idea of Amor Fati, but that couldn't be further from the truth. They were very sure of what they were saying. Why? Because the best way to become a good person and be truly happy, like Marcus Aurelius, Seneca, or Epicurus, was to love your life to the fullest, with all of its good and bad times. Marcus Aurelius said, Love your fate, no matter what form it takes because only through the acceptance of each moment can you find true serenity. Seneca added, Amor Fati is to love the totality of your existence, including your mistakes and failures, as they are opportunities to learn and grow in wisdom. But difficult doesn't mean impossible. It just means a lot of work is needed. Remember that the most important things are the ones that are hard to get. We should give Amor Fati our all because it has a lot to do with our happiness. I'll try to help you follow the concept of Amor Fati in this video so that you can be better and happy. I'm going to split the video in two for this. First, I'll try to explain what a Stoic's fate means and why you should love them. After that, I'll give you five tips on how to follow this philosophy and stay true to it. Before we start, I'd appreciate it if you shared this video, because it helps more people understand this philosoph why. Turn on the bell and subscribe if you don't want... Why did you invite him? He was out there all alone. 
Great party. I really feel the warmth. I wish this night would last forever. I'll get him up. Evidence for all fun kind. Hey, it's me, your skin. Some cleansers get us clean, but take my moisture. CeraVe cleanse. Miss any movies? Stoics in the past thought that there was no such thing as chance. They thought that the gods made the world's necessary and logical rules, which made everything work. In this way, they saw the world as a whole, with all of its parts working together perfectly. For this reason, everything that happened in the world had a reason, an explanation, or a role. Everything was governed by a logical rule. Stoics believe that the same logical rule that controls the world is also inside each person in their mind. This helps the person understand what is sensible and good. So, people who follow what their morality tells them are reasonable and good, while people who go against the law of the world, which is in their mind, are illogical and bad. We can call the way things turned out for each of us by the universe, fate. We each have a future that fits into the UN universe as a whole. Because of this, everything that happens to us, good or bad, is important and has a reason, even if we can't understand or control it. Even if we can't always see it, everything makes sense and has a purpose. Because of this, even when things are at their worst, we should try to see beyond ourselves. For us, living in serenity means accepting the way things are. It means to love one's future in that sense. But it's very important to know the difference between agreeing to something and quitting. Resignation is a bad thing because it means we won't do anything about what makes us unhappy. On the other hand, acceptance is a good thing. It lets us see what is and decide what to do based on what happens. A stoic doesn't want to give up and instead looks for ways to accept things as they are. And the stern duality of control is at the heart of acceptance. The things that happen in the world, like good health or bad health, disasters or miracles, life or death, are mostly out of our control. These things can't be changed, so they shouldn't stir up our hearts. But what we can control is how we feel about what happens and how strong our will is. Epictetus said it best. The will can control itself but nothing else can. We have a lot of power over what we do and how we respond to the things that happen to us and the things that we want. We can either accept and face our future as the road that has been set out for us and where we must find happiness, or we can run away from it. This is what stoic freedom means, the choice to either accept our future and match our will with virtue and good, or to reject our reality and seek vice and evil. Epictetus said, the will is the source of all good and evil. Marcus Aurelius agreed saying, things that are truly good, like virtue and justice, are within man's power and given by the gods, so he can avoid them if he so desires. It is always up to us to decide whether to seek good or bad in any given circumstances. We can either give up, become illogical, stop taking care of ourselves and get mad at everything and everyone when we are sick or we can fight to get better and live the best life possible even when we are sick the four stoic qualities can be mastered if we seek virtue and good and follow our feelings this means that everything that happens in our life good or bad should make us better and add to our lives we will be happy when things go well but we need to remember that they won't last forever. Bad times will try us and make us stronger. They will also make us better people, even though they are very hard. Finally, keep in mind that these bad times will pass too, and they are just as important, if not more so, than the good times. So, in order to practice Amor Fati, we also need to be brave. We have to be strong to deal with all the storms that come our way. In this way, someone who practices Amor Fati will also be able to control the virtues of wisdom and justice. They will learn to appreciate each moment for what it is worth, and most importantly, they will understand the universal law that controls everything. 
This law makes our unique future the best gift we can receive on our path to a full life and true happiness. As you saw in the theory of Amor Fati, it puts the four stoic principles in action and asks us to be our best selves. It entails accepting our own future and realizing that our life is the best and most beautiful chance we have to pursue virtue and a full life. Don't you think that a life without struggle and the search for happiness would not be worth living? Also, isn't it true that we can't be happy without making sacrifices and give up without accepting what we've been given? To achieve what reason tells us, we must love our own future and match our will. This is the patient way to get to real, complete happiness. I'd like to share some words from the past that talk about Amor Fati. Seneca says, Fate leads those who accept it and drags those who refuse to acknowledge it. He also says that no one is less lucky than the person who is forgotten by hardship because he doesn't get the chance to be tried. Marcus Aurelius says, it is human to love and seek what fate has given and prepared for him. Epictetus could add, do not try to make things happen the way you want them to. If you don't wish for things to happen the way they do, your life will go well. What do you believe about the stoic idea of Amor Fati? Are you on board with your future? Is there something going on in your life that you can't accept? Is there one that you accepted just the way it happened? I look forward to hearing from you in the comments. A person who knows the chains that bind him will be free because he will be aware that he can break them. Part two. Our world moves quickly and is always changing. Because of this, we often let bad habits take over, which are not only useless, but also harmful. The Stoics say that we should focus on what we can control and free ourselves from the chains of unchecked feelings, lust, and impulsive thoughts. Today, I'm going to talk about six bad habits I used to have that a lot of people have these days. It's possible for these habits to get in the way of our mental peace, personal growth, and living a good life. I want you to be honest with yourself and look at yourself from a third-person point of view before we go over these things. This will help you figure out which of these six bad habits is hurting you, and then you can face them head on. The first behavior is putting off plans. We all tend to pick up this sneaky habit, even though it might seem harmless. However, it has very bad effects. Putting off something that should or could be done now is called procrastination. While we keep thinking about what needs to be done, we don't do it. This wastes time and energy. Stoicism tells us that putting things off can make us not meet our personal and professional obligations, hurt the quality of our work, hurt our image, and make people not trust us. Stoics believed that putting things off was one of the worst things someone could do to themselves because they valued honesty and doing what they were supposed to do. Putting things off causes more stress and worry as dates get closer and tasks pile up. Our mental and physical health are both affected by this ongoing stress, which keeps us from having a clear mind and a peaceful mind. Let's say you need to finish an important job by a certain date. You put off and leave it until the last minute, rather than breaking the work up into doable chunks and working on it steadily. The worry and overload are getting worse, and you're having a hard time meeting the goal. Doing the work and planning it is a favor you do for yourself. It makes more sense to spread out the work over several days than to do it all at once. Putting off responsibilities is a bad habit that goes against the principles of stoicism. It wastes time, leaves obligations unmet, and causes more stress and worry. We can fight it by making plans, being self-disciplined, and keeping our eyes on our beliefs and duties. To prevent this, I suggest that you never make a promise when you're feeling very emotional, especially when you're happy. The reason for this is that decisions are often made based on how someone feels at the time. Before making a decision, think about it carefully when you're by yourself. Avoid making hasty choices 
and don't promise anything when you're happy. The second bad habit is lying. Many people in today's society lie all the time, but it's a very bad habit. They lie because they are afraid of being caught, and they will eventually be caught. Lies hurt the truth and your honor. The Stoics. Nariva plus six indicators in six seconds. Focus, memory, accurate. Nariva. Finger. Thought that being honest and telling the truth were important parts of living a good life. Because when we lie, we move away from these values and weaken our character. Also, lying hurts relationships and makes people lose trust in each other. People can lose trust in us when we lie. It's hard to get back the trust that was lost after a lie is found out. The Stoics believed that relationships should be based on trust and respect for each other. When we lie, we create a different world that can trap us in a maze of lies, which can lead to a circle of lies that gets more complicated and tiring over time. This causes stress and worry that aren't needed. For instance, let's say you see sensationalist news on social media and share it right away without checking it out or thinking about where it came from. It turns out that the news wasn't true after all. You feel lied to and ashamed. Sharing the news also spread false information which could have had a bad effect on other people's thoughts and actions. Believing everything we hear is a bad habit that stops us from thinking critically and leaves us open to being manipulated and swayed in the wrong direction. It's important to check facts, learn how to compare and contrast sources, and most importantly, make our own decisions. The modern world and other people will use and influence someone who doesn't have their own standards or the power to use their own conclusions. The fourth trait is not being able to talk to other people. Communication skills are important for both personal and business ties. We don't seem to value good language and conversation skills as much as we used to. People today have bad talks because they aren't interested in each other and don't really listen to what the other person is saying. Misunderstandings and fights can happen when people can't talk to each other well. The Stoics know how important it is for people to get along and work together. These ideas can be put at risk by bad communication. We will have trouble sharing our wants and feelings if we don't know how to talk to each other well. This could make people unhappy, angry and frustrated. Being honest and expressing yourself are important to Stoics and they think these things are important for good talks. We naturally want to connect with others and talk to them clearly. People should trade valuable things with each other during conversations. Talking to someone should be useful and not pointless. Not knowing how to talk to people is a bad habit that can cause problems, confusion, and trouble sharing our wants and feelings. I think that reading or watching useful content will help you improve your language and speaking skills. One thing that helped me a lot was practicing active listening. Spend less time thinking about what you'll say next and more time paying attention to what the other person is saying. This will make the other person feel important and the conversation will run better. If you keep practicing, you'll be able to communicate perfectly. The fifth practice is always comparing yourself to other people. I know you're very competitive, even if you don't mean to be. You always want to be better than other people, but this can hurt your self-esteem and make you unhappy with your life. Comparing ourselves to others all the time can make us unhappy and dissatisfied because there is always someone who seems to have more success, money, or ability than us. Instead of always comparing ourselves to others, the Stoics teach us to work on our own growth and be grateful for what we have. When we constantly compare ourselves to others, we might try to change who we are to fit standards or ideals, which can make us lose who we are. Keep in mind that this won't help you in the long run, because you will still be yourself after the fact. The Stoics say that we should be honest with ourselves and live by our own rules and ideals. Imagine that you constantly compare yourself to your co-workers and feel like you're not good enough. 
you always feel like you need to work harder to match or beat them. This ongoing stress can make you tired, unhappy, and dissatisfied, which can pull you away from your real self. Comparison with other people all the time is a bad habit that takes you away from your own identity and sincerity. When you understand that you don't need to always watch other people because you have what you need at home, this changes. You can always look elsewhere if you can't find what you need at home. Know that it's pointless to compare because you can't have everything. Thin, crispy, delicious. Let's do this thing. And by thing, I mean this. When your main goal is to get better than you were yesterday and fight with yourself, you'll be much happy. The sixth trait is looking for blame in other people or things. People often look outside of things that happen in their lives instead of taking responsibility for them. This way of thinking takes away our freedom and control because when we blame others for our problems, we give up control over our lives. The Stoics stress how important it is to know what we can control and what we can't. Putting the blame on others takes us away from this understanding. This habit can make us feel like victims and make us emotionally dependent on other people, making us very dependent on them for our security. We miss out on the chance to learn from our mistakes and grow as people when we look for someone else to blame for our problems. We don't take blame for this habit. For the Stoics, it's important to know and accept what we can control and to take responsibility for it. They say not to blame others for our problems. In order to live a life of virtue, wisdom, and inner tranquility, we must be aware of these habits and work to change them. Please think about these habits in your own life and be very honest with yourself. Bear in mind that the only way to break free from ties is for the person to become aware of them. You are the one who makes your own way from here on out. Moral development doesn't mean getting rid of all old rules. Instead, it means looking at them carefully to see which ones should stay, which ones should go, and which new rules should be added to our moral code. The third chapter. I understand forgiveness and give it. I treat other people the way I want to be treated. I don't want other people's things, and I'm very grateful for the good things in my life. In our minds, we suffer more than in real life. In the year 300 BCE, Zeno was a very rich trader who lived in the city of Cyprus. His ship sank while going from Phoenicia to Pius, taking all of its goods with it. Because of this one event, which Zeno had no control over, this man who used to be very rich became very poor very quickly. Think about being Zeno. The job you've done all your life could be lost because of natural disasters. How would you feel? What would be the right thing to do? Are you going to be mad? Would you think that life lied to you? This is how most of us would respond, but not Zeno, who is known as the father of Stoicism. Little changes can have big effects, and even small changes in how you think can lead to bigger changes. Stoicism is also based on the idea that things should be accepted and not cared about. Zeno made and taught Stoicism after reading the works of Socrates and other great thinkers. Zeno said that even though we have little control over what happens to us, we can control how it makes us feel. We should make good use of this control. Zeno chose not to complain. Instead, he focused on staying calm and neutral in the face of his problem. These days, people unintentionally think of Stoics as stable people who don't usually have big emotional reactions like fits of anger or worry. Stoicism, on the other hand, was not just a way of talking about people who don't feel anything. The idea of Stoicism helped people see, explain, and comprehend the world. A way of life that has been around for hundreds of years. Stoicism is a way of thinking that can be used today just like it was used thousands of years ago, and it has the same positive effects. Through Stoicism, we can work through bad feelings and events and turn them into thoughts that give us a new way of seeing the world. 
Perception is very important, and everyone has a unique view of the world because of their unique experiences. People knew a lot about the Stoics' general philosophy because they met, talked, and taught philosophy in public places. They thought that the Stoic way of life could help everyone, from slaves to emperors. Epictetus, a freed slave, Seneca, a famous politician, and Marcus Aurelius, a Roman emperor, and one of the strongest men who ever lived, are some of the most famous Stoics in the world. Early Stoics lived by what they taught, staying away from all kinds of segregation and leading the fight against unf- Lucy, give me the ball back! Good Quaker Oats. Heart healthy, too. Speaking of which, you have the heart to watch the kids in that? Their treatment. They even came up with the word cosmopolitan, which means world citizen. At the time that Stoicism was created, women were not allowed to study philosophy full time, but the Stoics greatly disagreed with this. Epictetus's master, Malone Rufo, once, not only do men possess a natural desire and doubt, in the same way, Stoicism tells us to expect all the bad things that happen to happen. One of the tasks that Stoics do is voluntary pain, which is meant to make people feel more grateful. Things like sleeping on the kitchen floor, taking cold showers instead of hot ones, and eating nothing but potatoes for a few days. If you have the right attitude, this exercise will help you see that no matter how hard things get, you'll get through them and maybe even do better. In a roundabout way, being able to handle these unpleasant events trains our thoughts to deal with future bad luck. It's more important than ever to follow stoic principles in a world where ads constantly tell us that we can only be happy if we look a certain way or have a certain amount of money. We didn't know much about the world when we were born. As kids, we learn things at home, at school, and by seeing the world around us. What's wrong is that these three sources of information often teach us different things. We need to take all of this information to heart. If we do that, we might set impossible goals for our lives, which will leave us upset and unhappy in the end. You shouldn't live like that. We need to work on getting better. If we only do things for ourselves, we won't be disappointed. Adding any outside hope or extra connection to what we do almost always makes us fail. Most of the time, we try to fill this gap with things outside of ourselves, like buying a fancy car or a house. We do all of these things sometimes because they are useful to other people, not because they are useful to ourselves. Stoicism, on the other hand, says that we should judge the success of our work by how hard we work at it, not by how our plans for the future turn out. We should believe in the process. When we live with less, we can break free from the social chains we're tied to. This is how the Stoics say we can solve our problems and be happy. To improve our self-esteem, we need to change how we think about what is valuable and focus on things we can control. We can stop worrying about things we can't control and, in general, live better and more fulfilling lives. Stoicism helps us get through storms, both past and present, and find calmer, more peaceful water. After all, Stoicism grew in different times, but its ideas have stood the test of time for hundreds of years. Its lessons are still very important today because they give us power and direction to deal with the problems of modern life. Philosophy from the past also teaches us to be emotionally strong and accepting. Philosophers teach us how to find peace and serenity despite difficult circumstances. Stoics like Seneca, Epictetus, and Marcus Aurelius thought that the way to true happiness wasn't to avoid problems, but to work on being good and controlling yourself, even when things were bad. They stress how important it is to know the difference between things we can control, like our emotions, decisions, and beliefs, and things we can't, like outside events and other people's behavior. We can find true peace within ourselves if we only think about the things we can control and accept the things we can't. 
people have always been looking. It's a movie that goes the distance. For reason and meaning. We learn how to find a real path that fits with our inner values by reading the works of existentialist thinkers. Stoicism also tells us how important it is to have friends and be part of a group. Thinking about people like Aristotle helps us make real links and keep them alive, which makes our trip more meaningful. The Stoics are interested in building personal virtue and self-mastery, but they don't believe in being alone or not caring about other people. Instead, the Stoics think that community life and ties with other people are important parts of being good and happy. Cicero, for example, wrote a lot about friendship and how important it is to build real, honest ties. He said that friendship was one of the most valuable things in life and that we should pick people who have the same goals and ideals as us. He also stressed how important it is to help others and make a good difference in the world. So, both Stoicism and other thought systems understand how important it is to build healthy communities and relationships with other people in order to live a full and worthwhile life. It's up to us to make real relationships with other people that help our moral and spiritual growth and make our personal journey more meaningful. When you use the old wisdom of philosophy, you'll be ready for any task and be able to live a strong, honest, and meaningful life. Fourth part. Join us on this quest for the best and the highest. Share and begin the path to becoming truly powerful. I wanted to talk to you about something that all of us have to deal with. Most of us don't want to go to work or school when we wake up in the morning.